If you don't like that, you don't like NBA basketball. Doma Sports Talk, worldwide, with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now, we watch sport all the time for historical stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just historical stuff. Like, for example, right now, tennis. You know what I mean? When you watch tennis right now, you're seeing greatness all the time. Roger Federer didn't stop, you know, basically, but he had 20 grand slams. I can remember when he passed Pete Sampras, had 14 grand slam. Roger Federer got 15 and went all the way up to 20. But the problem was Rafael Nadal wasn't too far behind because Rafael Nadal was going to get one every year at the French Open. Rafael Nadal done messed around and got 22 grand slams, right? Now Djokovic got 21. They're at the French Open right now. Let them know what's going on, which is a damn shame because I got to get up on my tennis. But you got, in the sport of tennis, you're watching the GOAT change hands within a four-year period. The GOAT can change hands three times. The GOAT. In basketball, the GOAT stays the GOAT, right? The GOAT. The GOAT in boxing probably stays the GOAT. In tennis, Roger Federer was the GOAT. About four years ago, and what didn't seem like, you know, he's the GOAT. Matter of fact, I still consider him the GOAT, but it's just me. That's it because he ain't. If you got less grand slams than Rafael Nadal, who's got to be the GOAT right now? But Novak Djokovic, if it wasn't for COVID and them damn them vaccines, Novak Djokovic wouldn't be one grand slam behind him in the first place. So Novak Djokovic has, you know, he can talk that he say he's the GOAT, you know? So it's, it's, it's going down. But you watch tennis because it's historic stuff going on. Right? You watch. Remember Kobe's 81 points? Kobe's 81 points. It reminds me of Terrence Crawford, bringing it back full circle to boxing. Right? Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence. It reminds me so much of Kobe Bryant's 81 points. Now, if anyone was watching Kobe Bryant's 81 points, right, you would know when he was playing Toronto and everybody was trying to defend him. Everybody, Peterson was trying to defend him. Uh, Jalen Rose was trying to defend him. They was all up on him. And Toronto was whooping the L.A.'s butt. Matter of fact, they needed every one of them 81. And he was dealing with, the, he was playing with the Kwame Browns and the, uh, who was my guy who could, Parker or whatever his name, who was just was upset that he had to keep passing over the ball. You know, he was playing with, you know, stuff like that. I don't know if Chris, Chris Mim was playing with him because I liked me some Mim, though. But it wasn't really, it was, you know, it, it, Kobe had scored him 81 points. Right, and he didn't have him early like that. He he had to he had to come in the second half and, and give it to him, right? And uh, it was awesome to watch him do that. But I always said back then, damn man, that was awesome. But the best thing about Kobe's eighty-one points didn't happen on that night, in my opinion. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm still pissed at uh, the coach. What was his name? Um, Phil Jackson. About three or four weeks earlier than that eighty-one points Kobe had. Right, three or four weeks earlier. He had had 62 points against the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, the Dirk Nowitzki Dallas Mavericks. Them. In three quarters. 62 points. Right? Dallas Mavericks had 61. Now, they were winning. The Lakers were winning by 19 points. And Phil Jackson took them out. Kobe understood it. Like, okay, you know, we're up by 19. Now, that wouldn't in today's game right now, 19 don't mean nothing. That's just about six threes. Real quick. You know? So, they probably wouldn't have took him out. My point being, Kobe would have had 81 on that night, too. Probably 90. You see what I'm saying? So he was deprived of going up for 80 something. You know, in my opinion, he had 80 twice in that year. Should have got MVP too. Now, why did I say that? You know, reminds me of Terrence Crawford, right? Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, they're going to fight on the 29th. I mean, it's going to be a fight, and it's going to be a barn burner of a fight because both of these dudes are awesome, you know. But right now, I'm talking about Terrence Crawford. Don't get it twisted. Errol Spence. Mr. I don't take tune-ups is, is, is Van Helsing, in my opinion, in terms of his heartbeat don't get up and he's ready to rock and roll. But I ain't talking about him right now. You know? I can make this Errol Spence video in the heartbeat if I not wanted to. But we're talking about Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, right, going to fight Errol Spence, but wants Jamel Charlo at 154 pounds and making it open. It's not like people got to say it for him. His team says it. He says it open. I'm going after Jamel Charlo, the baddest dude at 154 pounds. And like I like to say, if Jamel Charlo messes around and loses to Tim Chu, he's going to want Tim Chu. What his point is, I'm trying openly to become three-division undisputed. 
And it should be four. It should be four because the, uh, the lightweight division, like I keep saying, when he left, it wasn't nobody there talking about, uh, where you going? I want to fight you. Nobody. It was like, good riddance. So we can start, you know, we can fight each other. Because ain't nobody beating Crawford anyway. This is what we're doing. This is what's up. So my point being, the best thing about Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford might not happen on that night. If Terrence Crawford mess around and win and don't have to rematch him or rematch him and beat him again or whatever. But the bottom line is once that problem, Errol Spence problem is gone and Terrence Crawford mess around and win, we are probably are going to see someone go for three division undisputed in your lifetime. If you don't like that, you don't like professional boxing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yes, we watch sports to watch historical things. All sports, doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? What sport it is. But once you hear something's about to be historical, you tune in. So damn it, Errol Spence versus Bud Spence, uh, Bud, I'm about to say Bud Spence, Bud Crawford. And what Bud Crawford is trying to do, it's historical. So damn it, tune in. Don't sports talk worldwide. And I'm up out of here, y'all.